No worries. Alright, I think we are live, live-ish. Always takes a minute to uh, buffer the sucker up. I'm also going to have the chat up so that if somebody's talking, I can... Alright, I found that. Let's pause it because I don't need to see that feed. And we'll use the Discord feed for video reference because it's a little bit more live. Hey, Mike, how's it going? And, uh, you're gonna have to let us know if our audio is any good. Anybody that's used to these streams knows that uh, it usually takes a while for me to find a groove here. All right, so we have a bunch of stuff that. Have you uh, done a Pico, um, mod before? No, no. It's the other reason why I was kind of hoping you would uh, assist with this because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Yeah, I've done I've done that on two cubes now. Um, one of them I didn't have quite the right wire for, and it only worked if everything was in the right angle. I had to redo it. I'm still on my tape or on my workbench to get redone. I am just taking out every single GameCube or GameCube related accessory I could find, and we will uh, <laughs> deal with this as it comes. I don't right. remember which is yours. I don't. Although this looks like yours, that one right there. Fan yeah, assembly. really, really nice fan. fan assembly with uh, a slot in the side. Yeah, that, that looks like yours. It's got the uh, new Pico um, mount in it. Okay, so I got some some other randomness here. All right. Hey, what's up, everybody? Frank, Graphics Gear, Matt, Rod Talonart, what's going on? Yep, I'm uh, probably going to make an ass of myself, but what else is new? I'm all right with it. <laughs> um, also, it's I'm trying to get better camera angles here. I haven't had a chance to update my setup. I want to rearrange the room again, or at least a corner of the room at some point. So I'm still using this old-ass webcam. So that's probably not going to be the best, but we'll see. So... Um, I do have, I think, an older one of your fan assemblies here. Um, you might actually have, yeah, that that would be um, the V2 fan. And that this should still be perfectly V1. fine if we weren't using the Pico, Pico, whatever the heck. Mod. I mean, even if you if you are using the the Pico, you can just um, like hot dab a hot glue to touch it to the other print. Yeah, but it's just I want to nice use the to fancy have one I just got off you. Fair enough. <laughs> um, and I guess if I'll have an extra one of these, maybe somebody will want to buy it or use it or something. We'll figure that out. But all right. So oh I'm assuming the very first thing that we're going to do, what we should probably do is just power on the GameCube and make sure it works, right? <laughs> yeah. I've made that mistake quite a few times. Well, also, before. so for the Pico, you have to take the... Uh, heat sink off so if you let the console run without the fan on it for a little bit it'll heat the uh um thermal pads up you should be able to pull the heat sink off without too much extra force okay a lot of so, people damage the, uh all right let's do a few things then let me um okay. pop the top off well let me just power it on real quick now and then i'm gonna yeah. pop the top off and unplug the fan just to take your suggestion of letting it heat up a tiny bit and uh we, we shall go from there if uh if anybody wants more like prettier ways <laughs> to experience this check out tito from macho nacho productions and all of his awesome videos i uh just uh I, I love tito's videos but that doesn't mean i also don't want to do my own sometimes so <laughs> that's why i'm doing this but I have a feeling that his is just going to be better overall. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, I am wearing bear pajamas, bear socks, and a laser bear hoodie, and a laser bear t-shirt, just because of this stream. 
<laughs> I wanted to feel uh, very festive. That's awesome. Hey, Tony, thank you so much for the super chat. Much appreciated. You can buy me more bear merchandise with that. <laughs> hey, QWERTY, how's it going? Where's my scarf? I love that most people didn't get that joke. And uh, it's not a mean... That's not a mean-spirited thing. It's just... Um, just trust me. <laughs> so, let me add... So uh, I'm not changing the settings or anything right now, so it's going to be stretched to the stream resolution. It's going to look terrible. It's, it's fine. Yeah. The whole purpose of this is just to make sure that the GameCube is actually working. So change the same settings. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, let me double check to see if I even have an original GameCube game anymore to try it. I should, but who knows anymore? Well, oops. All right. Well, I guess we're really gonna test to make sure that the uh, Pico 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 boot works, because all I have is CDRs. So okay. Uh, so all I would do now is pop it open, unplug the fan, and then let that sucker heat up, right? Uh, yeah, so the, um, the Blade Battler controller, the uh, controller dongle has a um, different method of obtaining power, which causes it to not work in the uh, uh, with the Blue Retro mod installed. Um, there is a fix. I'm working on a video that kind of demonstrates how to do it. If you have some skill with soldering, you can also do a fix where you just bend a tab out of the way. And uh, it will um, then be detected properly by the Blue Retro board. Otherwise, there's going to be a conflict with the Blue Retro uh, taking uh, controller priority, which is why we do controller detection with the Blue Retro internally, because it'll uh, tell whether or not a, a controller is there and no longer send GameCube controller data to the console or read GameCube controller data coming back from the console for, like, Rumble features, and um, there's a ton of features that happen in in uh, the GameCube controller protocol that causes a lot of weird conflicts. Uh, Dev on the Bluetooth or the Dreamcast version is it, coming along pretty well. Um, I've got a few sample boards that I've gotten in so far. Um, we're testing out uh, early feature sets with it. There's a, a lot that still has to be added into these and a lot of changes that have to be made to kind of make every region fit because the PAL uh, power supplies actually sit over top of this board a little bit, so some stuff has to get moved around. Um, and so, then... Uh, some questions in the chat real quick. First, QWERTY, if you're still here, how are you How are you coming along on that RG Bench case? Because um, my hacked-ass ghetto version of the case where I took your top and put it on the bottom is <laughs> not is not cutting it. So I'd like to buy one from you. Um, also, uh, Adam Reeves wants to know, in my opinion, what's the best alternative to the official GameCube component cables? It's by far getting an HDMI Carby and then getting a cheap DAC. Retro RGB dot link forward slash cheap DAC, D-A-C. And you just get an HDMI to component converter. So, um, there's been an issue with the part shortage. They have been inconsistently good quality, but I've bought a couple that have been fine. So just buy it from that link, and you could always return it if uh, if there's an issue. Um, all right, Greg. So it's been running for yeah, Frank. Actually, the retro bit cables have some issues, so I wouldn't. I don't know if I would suggest those. And they were sourced from Bitfunks, the notorious clone company. Retro bits um, kind of walking a line because I heard a rumor that they're also going to be buying more stuff from Bitfunks and selling it. So, not cool. I don't think Ron really gives a shit, to be honest with you. I think Ron just got into this business because it was a, a neat little niche that no one else got into, and I don't think he actually cares about any of it. But, anyway, 
Um, so, we have this thing heating up, and uh, it's probably it, right? We only need a few minutes to get it warm. Yeah, you just want the uh, thermal pads to kind of be less sticky. So do I unbolt all of these on the sides now? Like, take you have to take pretty much every screw out of the console to do the Pico mod, because you have to take it all the way down to the uh, bare circuit board. Yeah, so this is why I... Uh, Working on game can, uh, annoys me sometimes. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, there's so many screws. You can pull your uh, front controller board forward. Uh, there's two little tab clicks on the sides of it. And then uh, pull the uh, ribbon cable out and set it aside because you're not going to need that until we put the blue retro board back in, or blue retro board into it. I got this awesome new screwdriver thanks to the people in the chat. Which is funny because I forgot the name brand. Weha. Um, I used to work with a guy from Germany who used to make fun of the crappy toolkits that we had in our design lab. And he basically demanded that we order all of these screwdrivers. And we kind of just listened because, like, you know, all right, it's, it's not an unfair request. And as soon as they came in, everybody was like, oh, shit, these are so much better. <laughs> so <laughs> I never really forgot that. But... I never forgot the experience, but I forgot the brand. So as soon as uh, people were recommending it, um, and I saw that name, I went, oh, I know what these are. So yeah, I'm very happy to own these now. And all the GameCube screws are the same length, right? Um, yeah, there's different physical sizes to the uh, screws. So there's, yeah, um, but all the ones that look the same, the brass ones are, yeah. you know, so you don't have to worry about mixing them up. And uh, I will be getting back to the chat as much as I can. I, it's, it's, a, it's a few feet away, so please excuse me. I'm trying to keep an eye on, on the chat as well. <laughs> Hopefully QWERTY was listening and uh, letting us know about that. Uh, there's a, a little bit of an order to the way the screws go back in, just because some parts overlay over other parts that have screws under them. Yeah, Carbion and DAC is probably the best way to go at this at the moment. But the uh, GC duels are coming back in stock at Castlemania. That is cool. So So I, um, I talked the other day, Greg, about the HDMI thing with the CEC switch. I, I must have wasted hours and hours messing around with my setup just to find huh. out that one of the problems I was chasing didn't exist. My Apple TV remote stopped sending huh. IR commands. And all I had oh. to do was pair it with a different Apple TV, then pair it back mm -hmm. to the original, and everything started working. So when I turned off my amp... It, I was wondering why it wasn't changing the TV's volume anymore, and that's what it was. Somehow the Apple... I've never seen that. I've been using Apple TV remotes for... I mean, since I had an Apple TV, like, I think I had version 2 or something. All right, so I got to take the these little ones off too, right? Get those little ones on the front with the uh, little metal... Uh... Actually, I think I have another power screwdriver for this as well. This is that one that sounds like a dildo. <laughs> it's, it's like the power wand or something like that. Magic wand, I, I don't know. I love this one, though. It's perfect for smaller screws. Oh, the, uh, yeah, I think I've got one of those. I just didn't like it because it's not really great with plastic stuff. It's, like, more meant for if the screw is in a, uh, like, a, a brass screw boss or something. Yeah. Like computers and stuff. I mean, I think it's, I think it's perfect for exactly this right here. You know. Yeah. If you have tiny little screws next to bigger screws, use you know a jumbo one for the bigger screws. This for the smaller. Camera is going crazy. I always thought it was funny that those little things right there, uh, Nintendo just reused from the N64 because those were what they pressed up against the uh, mem packs of the M N64. Oh, yeah, same things. Same they exact, uh, same exact little metal springy bit oh. in the si N64 too. So they saved their little press or punch or whatever it was that makes them. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, turned toast in the chat. If anybody was wondering what the deal was with the retro bit cables, is uh, I talked about some of the issues. That was um, a bunch of people had done some analysis, including Extrems, who, who digs in pretty deep with that stuff. So, hey, Monty, Monty. what's going on? So, okay. So now I down to the motherboard. Do I uh, now I unscrew this as well? Take the motherboard out. I think it's just the six screws in this into the heat sink. Those ones you will want to set aside just in case you run into any other screws that are around the same size. Is there? Uh, they've got a uh, snap or a not a snap ring. Um, uh, crush washer on them. Uh, the the motherboard's Pro, not coming out, so you, I'm taking the heat sink out, right? You have to take the heat sink out and motherboard out. I mean, just for ease of getting into it to solder to the small points. I mean, you probably could leave it in, I suppose. Yeah. Everybody um, knows I'm not the best at soldering, so it's uh, it's it's good that we just we're doing this. So this is what you mean about it's better if it's heated up. So I should probably power it back on and let it run for a second, right? Yeah, let it run just a little bit to kind of warm up. Um, it makes it a lot easier, and you're less likely to damage your uh, um, thermal pads. So when you go to reassemble it, your th thermal pads will still be there. I uh, I gotta try to find a better way to stand. I have a I don't know if you can see, but right here next to my bare pajamas, I have a CRT, just a, uh, just a tube, <laughs> laying there that it's uh it's gonna be for my Sammy cab. Um, sorry, nice. I gave me a little more space to walk, but I have to build mounting brackets for it, and I think I think these will cut it. I think, but if uh, I want to be I want to double check it because what I don't want to have happen is to mount this thing and then I look in it one day and the you know the bracket's bent and I can't use it. While we're doing this, let me check the chat a little bit. Hey Alex, what's up? The uh um Card Pro GameCube will have no conflicts with the Blue Retro board. The Blue Retro board doesn't touch anything with the uh memory card interfaces. Um so it doesn't have any like physical conflicts or electrical conflicts or anything along those lines. Funny, uh, I got a, a box from Thanos the other day. I wonder what's in here. Oh shit! <laughs> oh look at oh. that. I still have to get mine from him. I did the design for the case on that one as well. You know, I never, I never had like cracked and bleeding hands and then in the winter my mom always did growing up and then this mm. winter i'm just totally screwed my hands like are cracked and bleeding every day i i barely play guitar anymore but i still think i'm a guitarist so i don't want to put moisturizer on all the time but uh yeah it sucks it hurts and now i can't like i can't even grip stuff sometimes anybody have a cure for that all right so Liam, um, you didn't miss much. We've just been kind of chit-chatting, and we're uh, disassembling a GameCube to install the uh, Pico GameCube mod. Or Pico Boot mod. So it's not unsticking, so I should leave it a little longer, right? Uh, you can also kind of rotate it just a little bit. To try to get it to release. You don't want to go too far with it, and you don't want to stick anything under it. There's a lot of components that are easy to pop off. Yeah, um, it's very board. easy to think that you could just stick something underneath and pry it, but with motherboards that are uh, multi-layered like this, that's never a good thing. Yep. Yeah. yeah, let it run just a little bit longer to heat up. I think... Um, the creator suggested like 10 minutes. Okay. So I mean, you can it's still probably not hot start to the touch, so it's not hurting any of the chips. Yeah, no. GameCube runs so so cool. You could probably run the GameCube with a fan that barely moves air. As long as you're moving some air through it, it probably will I mean, never since get Since we're hot. waiting here, 
I just uh so yeah, I brought a hair dryer would help laser her. bear. Laser <laughs> bear. Bear pajamas. Bear socks. I don't have my bear slippers on because uh it's a little too warm. Those are really warm. And uh, I also have bear boxers on, but uh you're gonna have to subscribe to the OnlyFans if you want to see that. Yeah, you could use a, a hair dryer or a heat gun or something on it too if you wanted to go a little bit quicker. The only thing I don't like about using hot air, unless you really specifically know what you're doing, is it's so easy to blow over other components and loosen them up. Oh, yeah. And I mean, you know, pro modders probably just rolled their eyes, but you're a pro modder. Of course you know what you're doing. Whereas a beginner trying to do this, it's way different, even with a hair dryer. All right, that's still a little, uh, still a little snug. I on mine I ended up just ordering new thermal pads for my my build and I just put new ones in. I think it's like yield or something like that. It's like ten bucks for um each size. You need two different sizes of thermal pads. Do you have links to that? Uh I can pull them and send them to you. Yeah, um that would be awesome. Yeah, there there's two sizes you need. You need one millimeter and one point five millimeter. Um some people say you need three different sizes, but the two millimeter seems like it's too thick, at least when um, I was looking at them, how yeah. far away it is. Cause it, was, it would have been too much squish, because thermal pads, you have to have a certain amount of squish to them for them to work properly. Yeah, you know, one of the reasons why I didn't put... Um... I didn't put links in the description yet because I knew I was going to forget half of the stuff. So uh, maybe, Greg, we could just drop in our Discord chat here anything that we remember to put so afterwards I could link to everything. Obviously and especially all the Laser Bear stuff. But I just figured yeah. rather than half-ass it, tell people just come back five minutes after the stream is done. It'll be uh, it'll be good. Fair. Sure. Uh, it's hot, but not Bernie hot yet. So, yeah, you're still fine. Like, honestly, the game can run so cool that it's crazy that they put a giant heat sink on it. I like overkill like that though, because what did that really cost, and then what did that cost versus potential returns? You know. Oh, I've always wondered how how human involved the GameCube was to assemble at the factory, because. Some of it feels like you'd have to have a person doing it. A crazy machine to do it at any rate. Alright, well it's already getting looser, so that's a good thing. And it's starting to get hot, so let me unplug it now. And now let me try... There we go. Uh, I messed up some of the gunk on it, though. Just see how it is, and all right, yeah, a little bit there. I mean, you should be fine to reassemble it as long as you kind of get where the gunk is kind of weird, and we can at least get it tested. I'll yeah. get you the link yeah. to that new thermal pads. You can just cut your own thermal pads to put over it and replace all of it. All right, so ooh, my thing is CDR is fell on a CRT. Okay, uh, so. Um, that I believe... So let's see what we got here. Or, uh... So I have the sideways ST to SP2. That's cool. That'll go in last. Um, then I have Pico Boot, Pico Boot, whatever, right here. Did you already, uh, install on your, um... I did Is this Pico. just the Arduino Pro software install? Uh, no, with the Raspberry Pi Pico, oh, you um, plug it in via USB. It's got headers on it. Yeah, should I have sniffed those? Um, it won't fit into the mount that I sent you with uh, headers on it. So we could desolder them. I... Yeah, it'd probably be the. Yes, I mean desoldering is probably me, difficult, but. Um, I mean, this is kind of why I like making mistakes in these streams, right? Like, how many people would have actually 
known. You know, it's funny though. I, I think I bought this from a link that said for for GameCube Pico Boot installs. Isn't that great? <laughs> um. So, yeah. Software for Pico Boot is um like a binary file or something, and plug it in. It shows or hold the reset button. Plug it into USB. It will boot into um, a USB flash drive, and you copy the file onto the Pico as a USB flash drive, and then oh, it writes. That's the right, that is pretty easy. Do you have a link to that file, Greg? And and also um, uh, to yeah. keep it in the chat so that I could link to all of this. So that's the reset button. So let me. Uh, where's the releases tab here? All right. So I'm going to put the GitHub link in chat. And uh, I think you're a mod on my YouTube channel, so you should be able to post it in the chat chat too. And uh, actually, if you just want to type hi into the YouTube chat, that's the easiest way to test. Uh, you, the chat? Sorry. Cordy, I, I think I may have missed your response. Uh, what's up with the case for the RG bench? I mean that in a nice way. I want to buy one. I want to buy two, actually. I have one for Jose as well. So I'm typing into the... Um... Yeah, just in YouTube chat, just type hi or something like that, and that way I can make sure to make you a mod. Okay. There we go. But yeah, I did post the link. Okay. Now, uh, if you post the link in our Discord chat and in the YouTube chat, people would be able to know, or be able to see it. Where did we go? Where did my Discord go? Where did Discord go? Did I close it? That part's still working. Right there. This thing doesn't have the suck that it normally does. Where's Voltar? Gotta get your, my suck. Gotta get your filters cleaned out. There we go. Try this now. Where is the... I have no idea where my Discord went. I usually keep mine a lot cleaner than this. I'm a little disappointed in myself that, uh, well, it's not sounding too bad, but it usually works a little better than this. So when the stream's over, I'm gonna have to clean the crap out of my desoldering gun. Uh, oh, most of them are good. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That is awesome. awesome. You know what's so funny is when I first got my, my original desoldering gun, it wasn't this one with the pump. It was just the gun. 
And I would, it would take me an hour to do something like that, and I would end up burning the board. And when I finally just bought this one instead, everything worked perfect the first time. It was just like you saw it. And I gave mine, I think I sent it to Voltar, and he was like, I'll fix it. You don't know what you're doing. And I sent it to him, and he's like, your, your desoldering gun's broken. That's why it never worked for you. You actually didn't do something wrong for once. <laughs> I kind of got back to uh, doing these uh, gun con transmitters. Now it's got kind of like a um, clip for the, uh, like a webcam. Now it actually uh, stays on top of the monitor or TV. Whew. Yeah, I think there's some quality control things with the uh, Battler's Blades. Um, I did see that video you're referring to from. Um, Mad Little Pixels. Uh, I'm not entirely certain. It's probably just quality control issues more than anything. Um, but then there's also issues with it working with our GameCube Blue Retro Board, but that has to do with how we detect controllers, and they didn't use any of the uh, means that we use for controller detection. Hey, microphone working? I can't tell. Uh, I'm not talking. I was just waiting for you, so. Okay. Oh, uh. Almost done. Oh. I don't know what's going on here. Right. Okay. Just wanted to make sure it was working and that Discord's being weird. So. I'm still hearing you. Hopefully everybody uh, in the stream is. All right. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, I don't know why you'd even want to have headers on it, because I mean, you have to solder to directly to the board for the Pico mod. I guess you don't have to, but it's the easiest way to do it. I mean, it could just be somebody had some stock of these, saw that this was trending somewhere, and then just thought, well, let me let me add this as a, you know, as a purchase reason for it. Like, just add this to the description, and I fell for it. Yeah. You, you said you got it off of eBay? I don't remember. I could swear I... I think what happened was I tried to buy it off of one of the few stores that actually gives uh, credit back to the original creator, and they were either uh -huh. out of stock or shipping was, like, more than the board or something, so I bought it off of, I thought I bought it off a seller that I recognized the name, but now I'm starting okay. to doubt myself. Okay, so, now we're just going to plug that in, I'm going to... So, if you go to the, uh, Uh, QWERTY, if you wouldn't mind messaging me a link to that, um, I'll write it up on, on RetroRGB.com for you, because uh, I really do think that case is going to be awesome, and I think people would want that, so uh, if you don't mind. I'm still, still looking forward to playing that game, too. <laughs> Alright, um, so I held the button down, plugged it into my computer, it showed up as a USB device, so let me yep. grab... Um, Greg got so, the links and all the descriptions here. Yep. So uh, the picoboot.uf2, you just drop it onto the Raspberry Pi um, or Pico, and it'll uh, install the firmware. And once it's done, I think it flashes the LED or something and comes back on. Okay, so uh, after moving it to the, uh, the Pi, it'll oh, disconnect it itself. It Yep. All right. Oh, Ryan's here. <laughs> hey, thank you for the super chat, Ryan. Much appreciated. All right, so what, what's happening right now is exactly what Greg said. As soon as I dropped a file onto the uh, Raspberry Pi Pico, um, it 
ejected itself, so it made that sound, that USB ejection sound. And the light is now green. Did it flash? Does it flash super quick? Um, I think it going green just means it's done, so you can unplug it and use it now. Okay, is there a way to verify that it's done without doing it? Um, without using it, I mean. Like, let me unplug it and plug it back in and see what happens. Yeah, I don't, I don't no. think that there's really any other indication that it's done. Um, okay. it, you can always f update it while it's installed in the cube. Okay, I, uh, fair enough. Doing the same thing. Yeah, when it ejects and reboots, the flashing is done. Ah, thank you, QWERTY. Okay. And thank you, sir, for the link. I will write that up uh, probably tomorrow morning. Much appreciated. I'm gonna. I'll see if I could uh, have somebody local print me one, so I don't have to bug Greg with it. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm gonna need a couple of wires for this, right? Yeah, you need five, I think. Okay, and do you suggest individual wires or do you suggest um, like uh, ribbon cables? So his install guide. Because I remember it? you suggested something slightly different for the ground point when using your fan, right? Yeah, I I suggested using the ground that's higher up um, next to the 3.3 volt instead of the one that's all the way at the bottom. Uh, and in my use, I haven't run into any issues where it won't boot or anything. Um, but yeah, you need one, two, three, four, five wires. He suggests 26 gauge silicone stranded if you have, but... Um, you could probably do it with... Is. That looks like silicon, yeah. Lucky. Lucky guy. Nice. Cutters, strippers, and... Bumpers. Yeah, the, uh, the Pico's bootloader is pretty awesome. It comes straight from the factory like that, and it's easy to flash. Because you That's don't really even cool. need any special software. As long as you've got the binary file for it, you just throw it on, and it's flashed. Slack to do this, sort of, <laughs> sort of. Let me reroute this over. I got my flux pen just in case we need it. And then uh, let me throw the installation guide up. It's got pictures of where your points are. Which will probably help you out, Bob. Yeah, definitely. The uh, hardest points were probably the two that are on the little um, BIOS chip or IPL chip or whatever it's called. Um, and the rest of them are pretty easy. Did you all see me try to solder when I forgot to turn the soldering iron on? That's a typical Bob mistake. Funny, Ryan, a bunch of people asked me about that, and uh, I thought maybe one day I'll just do, like, a Patreon or, you know, supporter, float playing YouTube, whatever, stream, and go through all of these boxes. But it's basically just bags of cables and bo boxes of stuff for video games. All right. Um... I used to work for an insurance company, and we had so many of those boxes. All the fucking time. I think uh, I have a video from one of the floor moves that we had to do, and there was well over a thousand of those boxes stacked up against the wall. Okay, uh, I have this. Um, I have this up now. So. The stream is going bonkers. I'm on Ethernet. So can you on. still bridge the two uh, the two ground pins? You, um... uh, yes, because uh, I think one of them is not a ground pin. Okay. So that would um, be... I think one of them is the... the... That's 
a pin for for the chip select or something. You're basically disabling the onboard chip. So, I, okay, I'm double and triple and quadruple checking, but that's it right here. All right, so it's going to be these two. Surface mount electrolytic caps are always a pain in the butt to take off of a console, like on the Nomad. That should be fine. Those two right there. It's not touching yeah. anything else, and I bridge those together. All right, so that's one. Um, and I'm going to try to find the, follow the same colors just to try to make the stream a little bit better. Yeah, QWERTY clear bins are definitely better. They're just a lot more expensive, and they don't fit in the wire racks that I like to use because I'm a, I'm a wire rack kind of guy. So, All right, I'm going to grab... But I, I am a huge fan of those, and I have some of those going around as well. All right, so I'm going to do the red 3-volt. So that is... From the right on that one. Take it this way, so I'm looking at the same angle. So these aren't these aren't very hard. I'm just going very slow and careful, just for all the reasons. Um, I'm sure you know. I'm sure somebody who's done this before could probably blow through this mod in minutes. Cruz could probably do it with his eyes closed, but I am not Cruz, so I'm taking my time. <laughs> Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to just rip caps off of a board. Um, you can take like a good pair of flush cutters and cut the surface mount cap off and then just desolder its legs that are left over. You always risk dropping um, fluid from the electrolytic cap if you, know, you pop into the section of that. Just clean it up for if you do it. Um, I'm going to turn this down. I think there's a few flex um, cables out there now for this too. All right, so that's a solid, solid connection right there. That is not going anywhere. I don't want to give it a tug test. With the leverage of the uh, cable, but like just, yeah, that is a solid, solid connection. So that is red. Um, so that is three volt, and then pink is the other one. I don't know. Do I have pink in here? GP5. Yeah, let's see what other colors we got. So, uh... I don't have pink, so I'm going to use white. <laughs> that works. Uh, Shadow Mask, my mic is is panned to the left. I specifically went in and set it to mono in OBS because I always freaking do this. Double check. So, test, test, uh, advanced. It is set to mono. Yeah, because this is just to the left, and now this is mono. So, yeah, that's weird. Mono on the left channel. I don't, I don't get it. I'm sorry. I'm just going to leave it be. I updated. I made the mistake of accidentally updating OBS. That's what happened. Because my streams have been pretty consistent. The only one is when I forgot to charge the battery on my wireless mic. Uh, and this is, So every time I update OBS, something happens. Should I turn my mic OBS is an amazing piece of software. 
if I'm coming through louder, should I turn mine down a little bit and you and everybody can just turn their speakers up a bit? Oh, I can turn mine up. That's fine. Um, just give me one second. I, should, I will do just that. Stream, right? Yeah, okay. Up a little bit. All right, is that better? Too much? Too loud? All right. Sal, let us know. And uh, oh, let me go back to that reference sheet. Okay, thanks, Sal. So pink was one from the right. So it's basically skip one from over from the left. So. Can this in another solid, solid connection? I'll wiggle it to make sure. Yeah. All right. Nice. What else we got next is blue and orange. So that's for the MX chip. Okay. Blue, and I guess I'm gonna have to use yellow instead of orange, but that's fine. So um, the side with the CPU, um, go three over. Is this, the, it's the same side of the motherboard or is it on the opposite side? Um, so it would be the side of the MX chip next to the CPU or GPU or whichever chip that is. Man. Oh, I see it now. Jeez, my, you know, my ears, shockingly, after hundreds of metal shows and playing quite a few myself, my ears are still totally fine, but I think my eyes are finally starting to give in, which makes me so sad, but. Hey, at least I'll look prettier in the mirror. <laughs> yep, that's right. I'm cheating. So it's the MX chip that's directly above the uh, where we were just wiring to, right? Yep. That one. Let me. So the. Uh... So Crystal. Two, from, uh, two from the left and three from the top. So perfect. Yeah. Three from the top. All right. So for the record, I could see the chip. <laughs> I just couldn't see the writing on it. <laughs> I'm not that blind yet. When I uh, okay. was doing the blue retro board for the GameCube, I had to find some uh, logic converters. And I couldn't find them in a size that I could like see with my bare eyes, so uh, I had to get them so freaking small. I had to use my microscope to put them on. Jeez, like this that was for the testing phase before we put it into production, then it didn't matter because then they can just do that with their pick and place. Speaking of, apparently, pick and place machines are not that expensive. Oh, yeah. I thought they were like, you know, fifty thousand dollar type things, but you can get a picking place machine for less than ten grand. I thought they were ten. Yeah, I've I've seen seen them for as low as seven. That's pretty awesome. Uh Mateus has one. Um the person who was doing the um that Game Gear motherboard. Yeah. I know this is you're, you're talking the uh, the DIY one where you you built it from scratch, right? Corey? Yeah. Yeah, I thought about doing one of those as well, but I've got so much of my time focused on like printer maintenance, repairs, and whatnot that I kind of want to get to the point where I just buy a machine that I can walk up and hit start on rather than. Do all of the uh, maintenance and 
servicing that a DIY machine takes. That's that's exactly what my my view on uh, 3D printers are. Because I'm lucky enough to have friends like you, where the rare time I actually need something, I could just shoot you a text. But the one that really caught my eye was the one that you were recently talking about. That um, that I think you oh, can do bamboo. multiple colors too. Yeah, what was that um, one called again? Uh, it's the Bamboo X1 Carbon. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, that thing is amazing. Like. There is no no config to it. Like you have to tune in your your filament profiles for whatever filament you're using, but the machine's actual starting, getting it going, nothing. You pretty much hit start, and it goes. And that's it, a uh, fairly new machine too, right? Yep, it's really new to the market. Apparently, the parent company is uh, DJI, the guys that make drones. The drones. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Which it just recently revealed was the parent company of it. So, um, yeah, it uh, has a bunch of sensors in it where it can actually um, figure out what the flow rate needs to be set to and get your your filament going for your first layer and set the first layer height so you don't even have to do anything like that. Wow. I think I'll wait just a, a little while longer, both because I'm broke, but also because I just want to see, um, you know, if a year goes by, are people going, oh, man, these things are just dying on me left and right, or is a year going to go by and people are like, these things are tanks, definitely buy it, so. Oh, yeah, I don't blame you there. We're waiting to get through probably another month or two with ours, where we're pushing it 18 hours a day, print time, to see if we can get that type of reliability that we want out of it, and then we'll be purchasing more to add to our our uh, uh, farm here. Yeah, Thanks. another solid connection. All right. Yeah, Cordy, I, I definitely want to get into doing pick and place in house. Like, I don't have a problem doing our bigger runs um, with the the company that we've been working with for the last few years, but doing it in house where I can you know only do a hundred of them at a time and not be charged an arm and a leg for a small batch production would be amazing. Yeah, Cordy also asked what where I got my holder for the Kesker. I don't have the slightest clue. This may have come with that other piece of crap iron that I used to have, uh, and I just kept using it. And it seems to be a decent enough fit, so I just kept using it. So yeah, if anybody knows, does this look familiar? Is this something we could order? Is it on my modding page? <laughs> Wait, let me check. Because there's been a many times over the years where I didn't even remember where I got something, and it was a scenario where somebody was like, oh, dude, you should try this. And then people are asked about it and I Google it and I find it on my, on my own, uh, um, on my own site here. Sign tips. Wait, no, I think it's here. Uh, hi David. Welcome to the stream. Hello David. All right. There you go, QWERTY. And, uh, here is, it was on my own page. I very stupidly forgot that I even had that. Um, it doesn't look like it's in stock, but it doesn't matter now that you have, the description you could probably just order the same one yeah okay so i have four of them set and greg where did you suggest i put the black one for ground um i don't have a pipe in front of me i think there's a ground that's labeled right next to the 3.3 So 3.3 um, looks like 1038 is a ground. Um, that one would be perfect for for you, and that's just above the 3.3. So 
So the wire it's that I put three point three, the one just above that. I'll and I'll test with the multimeter too, of course. Um, so thirty eight is two above the one that he notes in the uh, drawing. So you thirty nine looks like it's labeled on the on the pico as a number, and it's the one directly below that. Oh, so you mean where I solder to on the pico, not on the GameCube motherboard? Yeah. Oh, so just put the, around where he put it. Yep. Oh. It only changed because he sense. wants the uh, ground to be all the way at the bottom of the pico. Um, when you go to put it into the mount that for the fan that I have, it will uh, not fit because it'll conflict with where that ground pin gets connected. Okay, super solid. All right, so um, for wire management, I was thinking that it's probably best if I try to aim for about where it's going to be anyway with yours. So I have yeah. your, where the, it's probably right in front of my face, right here. And that will eventually mount. Uh, Dan did um, confirm the GC loaders were coming back. It's a hardware revision to a different um, FPGA. So they'll do a soak test where They'll probably have just a few hundred or a hundred plus boards. Uh, and once that's confirmed that they're working in the wild, then they'll do a bigger run of them. So that's basically where I'm going to be putting this, right? Yep. So I really, to save for slack, I could just, here is more than enough, I would think. Um, and let me, let me have something to prop this down on. Where is that cardboard thing? All right. Um, let me get you the link to um, the firmware page for that second. Uh, cyber, oh, I, you might be, well, I don't know if my voice would have a reverb. Let me try, um, let me just try adding a filter to it. Uh, here, now it's the NVIDIA noise removal and room echo. Uh, the Noctua fan is perfectly fine. It does spin a little bit slower than the uh, noise blocker fan and moves um, a little bit less air overall. But the GameCube really is fine as long as some air is moving through it. Um, so on that itch.io uh, for Blue Retro, you hit the download now at the top, and then hit the no thanks, just take me to the downloads. And you want hardware two, so 1.8.2 hardware two is the Blue Retro firmware. Um, that the GameCube Blue Retro board uses. Uh, to my knowledge, I think it's the only commercially available Hardware 2 device, so. <sighs> oh, it's a square pin. Well, isn't that handy? Good job, Raspberry Pi crew. <laughs> And not a problem. I'm going to have to upgrade this streaming camera soon so that uh, I can do stuff like zoom in easily and show you. I could do that with my Lumix now, but the we're, I have my GH5 set up for, you know, a cinematic look for lack of a better description. So it's the depth of field lens and the other lens I got. Isn't that great? So, so I just don't like to, to use it for these streams. It never ends up looking that much better than the crappy webcam, so I'm just trying to figure out another solution. I keep trying to bu uh, bug Epos, the stream professor, to, to help me. He's been super busy with stuff lately, but because he found a webcam that was the least like a webcam that he's seen, but it's still a webcam, so you don't get, you know, DSLR features, and I don't know. I just, I got to be very careful where I spend my money. I'm still kind of debating whether I should even keep that amp 
the uh, thing that I tweeted about today, or I think I put it even on, as a YouTube short, because I can't really afford it, but it kind of solved a whole bunch of problems in my house, so. Um, Ground is good. not a whole lot that I can talk about. There is the game key or the Dreamcast Blue Retro board that I'm, um, or that we've kind of teased in the wild, but uh, outside of that, anything else that I'm working on is for the most part pretty private. The uh, Dreamcast Blue Retro is going to be. Um, quite the undertaking too because it will have um vmu built-in support as well and uh there's also going to be some pretty cool things to come with it to enable the lcd side of vmus outside of a dreamcast controller too so don't have a lot of details i can share on that side of things but it'll be pretty cool Details or uh, or updates, I guess, is probably a better thing on the potential for a PS2 um, mem card pro because I believe it was the security lockout that was preventing it. But there had been some uh, some progress with that, but I don't think it was a, a total solution. I think it would have been one of those things where, at the time that I'm remembering, probably a year ago, it would only work on you know Model X PlayStation, so it's not worth doing. Um. Before I answer that, uh, yes, the Dreamcast Blue Rush will be solderless as well, as just like the, the current one for the GameCube. Um, so the MemCard Pro will see a PlayStation 2 variant. Um, I believe the hurdle that Thanos had to get over was to do with uh, the encryption key for the uh, Magic Gate side of things. Uh, Sony is very, very litigious, and an encryption key is something that they can claim copyright over. So it had to be clean roomed, reversed. Uh, the original Xbox will likely not get support from Blue Retro because the original Xbox uses uh, USB controllers. And Blue Retro is not capable of USB direct USB output. There has been some talk about doing a um, kind of like a USB addition to Blue Retro as a separate project that uses a different version of Blue Retro that can talk via a serial port to an adapter that can then talk to the um, Xbox. to walk around it stinky sweaty feet bad enough i have giant ass feet as it is so thank you for the super chat sir uh, uh oh i guess i should turn off the noise processing then huh? um is that better so everybody maybe oh the original xbox controllers are usb they just use a different connector to connect to the uh console with a uh, adapter, you can actually directly plug them into a Windows PC, and they will work with just a little cable adapter for USB. So I got to, uh, I have to drop this in the chat here. Um, I know this is absolutely out of t off topic, and not at all what people were uh, were here th to talk about. However, somebody had just commented on my crocs but they're not crocs and this is something that you can make fun of me all you want i'm all for being made fun of but here's what the these are 
So when I messed my back up really bad, I couldn't stand on hard surfaces for too long. So what I ended up doing was going around asking my friends, like, hey, do you know where I could get, like, a really good workout mat? Because those are nice and squishy and, you know, would support your back pretty well. And I couldn't really find one for cheap. So I found this that is basically just, uh, it's, it's like walking around on a workout mat. And it cured my feet in like a month after having fucked up feet from, uh, from basically having to stand for six months straight. Because when I messed my back up, I couldn't sit and I'd have to like throw myself <laughs> onto the bed. I could only be horizontal or vertical, not in between. So those saved me. And uh, I still wear them because they're, they're awesome. So Wayne, absolutely, man. Make fun of me. I am all for it. I, I love a good tease. But that, uh, that was worth it because, holy crap, it made a massive difference. Odd to talk about uh, UFOs on this live stream, but holy crap, that, that was such a game changer for me. And it's funny, too, because I sent the, that link to a bunch of people that also had similar back issues, and they all made fun of me. They all said they wouldn't be caught dead wearing them. And then about two months later, they all individually texted me, unprompted, thanked me for it, and said that it was a lifesaver. So there you go. Um, all right, so three, four, five, six, seven, one before that. Ooh! Yeah, all right, that is that one. Let me get these tinned. All right, so I used a white wire in place of orange because I didn't have an orange wire. And that one, you have to bridge two spots on Pico. Uh, You're right. Which is GP5, which I'm doing GP5 next. Pink. No, yeah, that okay. was pink. Pink. Sorry. Oh, pink, not yep. orange. Sorry. Yeah. No, you, you are correct. Thank you for looking out for me. That's totally mistakes I would make. Um, and do you run the wires across the board like this? Is that okay? Um, I come out the back of the board. Because once it's in place, they'll just kind of sit over that little um, ledge there. You're right. Great idea. Great idea. Uh, yeah, the... Well, I don't know that it recognizes an Xbox controller. It recognizes... Or, uh, the system recognizes it as a generic X input device. Um, at least that's what it was the last time I tried to connect a original Xbox controller via USB. Just swapping those over real quick. That was a great idea. Uh, your compatibility is due to how you're loading your games. Um, the uh, SD2 SP2 port on the bottom of the console has a lower overall uh, read speed and the GC loader is capable of hitting but the GC loader cannot write as quickly so it takes longer to boot the uh, to boot um, any of the changes that you make to a game when you start it with Swiss uh, and I believe the compatibility is still pretty high with with uh, the SD to SP two. Right, good idea coming in from the back. I just moved those over, and uh, so I'm gonna do purple, blue, and then I'll do jump the last ones next to it. So that one's one right above it. So that should be pretty easy as well. Welcome, Stadium Arts. And, you know, thanks to everybody for being patient with me on this stream. I just, you know, this is more of hanging out and discussing what's going on. I'm, I'm clearly not the best at soldering, but I also want it to come out good. So I think taking my time and doing it right, even if it takes a little longer, is probably a good example to set for anybody who has lack of skills like I do. Because anybody could do this. You just got to be a little patient. 
Yeah, Memcard Pro GC works with the Blue Retro internal board. Uh, Pico Boot is just an entry mode into uh, Swiss for the most part. So as long as Swiss supports audio streaming, which it does from the SP2, SP2, SD2, uh, whatever. There's a lot of letters yeah. and numbers. Um, yeah, and now you know how hard it is, is to say this crap on the weekly podcast. Yeah. Uh, Swiss supports um, streaming audio from every single um, source at this point. So you shouldn't run into really any issues with streaming audio. I, I think there's still a few things that aren't perfect, perfect, but uh, the the compatibility is really high. Okay, so we have the last one to do where I have to take orange to bridge two. So I'm going to... I didn't have an orange wire, so I just used yellow. And that is... Yep, this is so the it's right below. Raspberry so... Pi um, IPL replacement for the GameCube. Or the Pi Pico IPL replacement. <laughs> Thank you, Aaron, for the super chat. That is awesome. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know that I can answer anything about the Triforce. I've never actually seen one in person. Same. Yeah, it was pretty awesome when uh, Xtremes and uh, Emo Kid were able to Track that down. I can't remember which one for sure did it, but one of those two did it for sure. I will be right back. Okay. Try to bridge these together using the cable itself. So I wish I had a third arm. Go ahead, make the jokes. It's fine. It's serious though. Oh, nice. Not bad. So I think what we just got to do. Um, I'm pretty sure I could just do this is move the switch assembly over. It's so like Greg's 3D print comes with its own screw, I think. So yeah, you for putting the uh, power board on top. Yeah, use your screw, not the original one. You can use the original one, but a lot of people strip the original one out when they try to put it into new plastic. Oh. Well, I'm so gonna we give all leftover parts to uh, Brooklyn Video Games uh, just to use for any consoles they have coming in there. So I'm putting that screw back in. Um, and I'll probably end up giving the other, the extra ones to Jose as well, uh, just for any of his game cubes or something. I don't get a chance to get down there as often, but I, I just try to make it a point. Like, uh, I, I love that place. The owner's awesome. So I just always try to spread the love. All right, so brand new Noctua fan. Or no, this isn't the Noctua. This is the, the other one. Noise blocker. Noise blocker, okay. Um, of course, it's a pain in the ass to open. Yeah, those boxes suck. Especially because we have to open them to put, or to uh, pull the fans out to mod them and put them back in when we do the modded fans. Toss the box out and get it out the way. Ooh. 
Hobbs TV, thank you for the super chat. That's also very awesome. And I guess I gave them advice about the RGB blaster, and uh, the advice was spot on. They used a 470K ohm resistor by mistake. Do you have any idea how many times I've done that? And it's not just like, oh no, I modded something and maybe I broke it. Like I'm working on stuff where people are depending on me to come up with the results. And I put it together and I'm like, nothing happened. Like, what do you mean nothing happened? Like nothing. I like double check everything. And I pull all the components out and I get to that and I put a 75K resistor where a 75 ohm would have gone. So by, uh, by no means should you feel silly about that. That happens to all of us, and holy crap, it sucks sometimes. So uh, <laughs> really glad, <laughs> really glad you're able to do it. The good news is if you use too high a resistance, it just doesn't get voltage. So there's zero damage to be done. That is very true. All right, laser bear. Uh, I'm assuming laser bear side out. Yep. And, it goes uh, in from the bottom. Say what? It goes in from the bottom. Oh, and uh, the it cable coming in. out the top, right? Uh, you can have the cable come out the top, but with that, you could also come out the side. Which There's would you suggest? In the side. Side? Uh, I'd say go out the side of it. And then it just pushes in and snaps in at the top. It did snap in, and... Um, don't plug it in there because you're going to plug it into the blue retro board. Oh, okay. Uh, so now I basically just sl slide this into place. And I did end up using too much slack, huh? But, you know, all right, you win some, you lose some. Oh, so the one thing that I didn't do, which uh, I'm just going to redo these real quick. They should be going pointing to the inside, not to the outside. And the extra, is the extra slack going to be a really big deal? Do I need to trim all this down? Uh, you should be fine. If it doesn't boot, then you might have to make it shorter, but... Then you know what? Let's just make it shorter now, because um, this is going to be a quick thing to just do. Uh, and I have to reroute how some of these go anyway, so let me... Ah, crap. Always do this, but, you know, tried to make it look fancy. Did I try I it absolutely this? love using Blue Retro on the GameCube. Four inches max is what um, the creator recommends for this. Uh, by the way, he's in the chat. Oh, he is? Yeah. Hey, WebHDX. How you doing, my friend? Good to see you. I know we were supposed to do this stream months ago, but life got a little bit insane. So I just uh, I wanted to get to it as soon as I could. And unfortunately, that's today. But I prefer the PlayStation 5 controller. Uh, so Destiny the, the recently Sony controller hit me up with one of those, so I was able to use it for the first time. PlayStation 5? Yeah, the controller. Yeah. Uh, there is a firmware update that you might need to do to it. Okay, so... Low, the PS5 controllers have the lowest latency. Uh, it's less than 6 milliseconds, it's like 5.2 or something like that, to the uh, Blue Retro board. And then the Blue Retro board's latency to the console is nearly zero because it's directly connected and it just translates the... Uh, Bluetooth commands to GameCube commands. Uh, they the there is a mode for that DC PI. Um, when you go into the um, config menu. On uh, BlueRetro.io, uh, if you select the preset options, there's a preset for doing the 95% uh, pull, and then the last 5% pull will do the click at the end of the uh, um, GameCube uh, analog um, triggers. Uh, here's uh, a stupid question for you. Can I update a PlayStation 5 controller if I don't own a PlayStation 5? 
Yes. Sony okay. has a updater for Windows. That is shocking. That is not a very un-Sony thing to do. Well, they started releasing Sony games for uh, Steam. Okay. And uh, Steam now 100% supports the uh, DualShock or DualSense controller in Steam uh, directly. Uh, it doesn't r mimic the resistance, uh, but it will mimic the, the functionality of it. Um, the One of the things I'm working on for the Dreamcast Blue Retro Board is a LIR 2032 uh, battery charging module. So oh. you will be able to use an off-the-shelf LIR 2032, which is a lot easier to get a hold of than the ML 2032s. And for the most part, it'll be a lot more stable. Um, so I'm still testing the charging circuits that I've built for it because it won't be charged by the Dreamcast internal charging circuit for batteries. But in early testing, it did work as a replacement for the uh, battery in the console. It's trickier than it looks. I'm trying to get the... get this on and then I'll put that one back on maybe I come over on this side you're welcome there General Asma I think the only downside of having holes in the pads is sometimes the solder goes through it. So you got to kind of flood it a little bit more than you normally might. Um, all original controllers and BMUs will still function with the uh, Blue Retro. Uh, some of the wireless features that will come to the um, VMU side of things for the 8-bit mods... Um, collaboration that we're doing won't be possible with the VM2. Uh, at least as we're going right now, it won't do like wireless connection to the VM2. Um, but everything else with the VM2 will work as long as you plug it into a controller plugged into a port. The, um, the uh, Blue Retro won't interfere with that at all. And uh, the Exilene Bluetooth controller does work in Blue Retro. Uh, it got um, official support in Blue Retro main for version 1.8.2. Uh, it does not support Rumble at the moment. Um, but Darth Cloud has a copy of it, or has one of those controllers in hand to do more work on it to get it to work properly but it has to be set up in the i think android mode or mac mode or something it has to be in a certain mode in order to uh function okay. with blue retro correctly much better all of these are uh less than four inches um do you suggest i power it on just as is for two seconds to make sure it boots or do i put the heat sink back on or anything else um before you do that if you want to check for boot you need to get your sd2 sp2 and put a sd card in with swiss on it and swiss should be named um ipl.doll so let me put the link to the latest swiss yeah. That. that you can go grab it. Da, da, da. See. Yeah, I like the uh, um, X Lean GameCube controller too. Uh, I actually like it better than the uh, Power A controller, which is the other one that looks like a GameCube controller. I do wish it had analog triggers. It's really the thing that it lacks uh, where were we? 
So I download the uh, the Swiss, uh, the full version of Swiss, and uh, extract it, right? Not the end kit. Um, yeah, you download the full version of Swiss, and then uh, you're going to um, let's see here. The so Swiss fourteen R fourteen hundred, and then uh, under the doll, I drag the doll file, right? Drag the doll file to the root of the of the SD card, and then you rename it to IPL dot doll. Gotcha. Okay. So I am going to try installing here. The side loading one. So okay. it's two pieces that I think you have to put together, which I can't tell if you did or not, but Uh, Apido Pro 2, you might need to update your firmware on your Apido Pro 2, and then you also have to um, sync it with X input mode, which is holding start and X, I think. Yeah, I believe it's start and X. And then connect with X input mode, and Bluetooth should be functional in that mode. Um, there is a proper connection guide now. Uh, let me pull that guide up and I can post that in chat. Have a uh, rumble set up in uh, the uh, retro.io. Does the Pro 2 have a dedicated switch? Okay. I must have... Oh, yeah, I have the Pro Plus. <laughs> I don't have a Pro 2. I need to probably pick one up for the office. It's the weirdest thing about starting to do anything with, like, Bluetooth controllers is now I have to have every single Bluetooth controller so I can help people when stuff comes up. Like, I don't know. Let me get one of those controllers to find out. Um, put, um, one of my connections wasn't perfect, and uh, it would have bugged me. So let me just add some flux real quick and throw that back on. Because you know that's one of those things where we'd get five minutes down the road and something would happen and it would turn out to be this. So... One thing that kind of bugs me about the Ultimate is it only has a switch mode for some reason. It doesn't do, like, X input for uh, Bluetooth. Uh, where's the... All right, I think that's as good as that's going to get. So now just plug the sucker in, right? Uh, put your heat sink back on. Uh, I was going to just power it on for five seconds just to see if we got boot. Still throw the heat sink on for that? I would just to uh, err on the side of caution. You don't have to press it down or anything. Just kind of get yeah. it there. All right. I will uh, throw the uh, capture card up here. Stadium Art, it's funny. Somebody else just uh, asked me that before. And yeah, it's just go to the tools section and it's one of the links there for modding tools. It's out of stock now, but you could just search for the same terms and model number and you should be able to find it cheap or, you know, a knockoff or something on it. Your uh, video is gone. Oh, you're uh, plugging in the GameCube. That's right. Yep. Um, oh, I didn't know there was two different versions of Ultimate. I guess I only have the one. Must be a switch version.
Uh, so the link I just put in chat goes to the controller pairing guide, and it'll walk you through how to connect your specific controller to uh, Blue Retro. So it's really useful if you're trying to do like a PS3 controller, because you have to use a separate app to, the, to get that one to go. Um, and then uh, there's also a notable thing that Darth Cloud just recently added where you can scan Bluetooth connections from your Windows PC. And he can add a controller that's not currently supported in Blue Retro by your scans that you send to him. He's got a guide on how to do it. I'll have to mess around with that to get it into X input mode because. Uh, for Blue Retro, you can do a lot more in X input mode than you can in Switch mode. All right, that's a good sign. Yeah, you boot it up. Uh, you just hit no and uh, make I gotta sure. I plug the thing in then, damn it. Uh... Oh, yeah. You plug your controller port back in. Error has occurred. Let me get this plugged back in. I powered it off, by the way. So let me plug this back in and then see what I could do about that. Controller ports in. Controller. Power back on. Your uh, SD card formatted FAT32? 99.9% .9 chance yes, because that's kind of always something I do. Uh, okay. Do I just go right up to gameplay? Yeah, it should just go into um, Swiss. All right, well, time to just check everything then. Yeah. Hold D-pad down when booting. Oh, okay. Let's try that again. Powering it on, holding D-pad down. D-pad not analog stick. Still holding it down, nothing. Oh, there's curd. He, um, Web HDX says that if you're getting IPL boots, um, but it's not booting in correctly, the SD card is probably the issue. Okay, no problem. Hey, thank you so much, WebHDX, for jumping on here. It's, uh, it's very cool to have all the experts helping me out on this one, because this really isn't about me. This is about helping other people do all this stuff. So, all right. Um, it was formatted FAT32, but I think I have a brand new... Uh, yeah, I do have a brand new. Well, I'm just going to use a brand new micro SD and go from there. Yeah, he got a green light on the Pico after he put the uh, firmware on it earlier. Yeah, these micro SDs are harder to open. Oh, come on. Um, the uh, Blue Retro built-in VMUs will be a full-size regular VMU. Uh, that's a limitation of the uh, VMU format, from what 8 Mods is telling me. And... There will be multiple VMUs available per controller slot. Uh, I, as of right now, we're still determining how much space we're going to have available on the SP32, but you should be able to get more than four VMUs uh, available to you per controller port. Okay, I am using um, FAT32 formatter, or GUI format 32, yeah. or whichever one. Uh, so... Selecting, okay. 
Dr. Sever, how many SD cards do I think I have? I have a handful of like two gig and less just because they're hard to get and some, some things require them. But all of the normal ones I have, I end up giving away all the time. <laughs> it, it seems weird, but like all anytime I have a friend that needs something, it's like, oh, I got one of those here, just take it. I'll get another one. And I never get another one. So, all right, WebHDX. So I just formatted this SD card, brand new, FAT32. I'm going into Swiss, uh, the Swiss zip file going into the doll directory, dragging Swiss R1400.doll over to the root, and then renaming it IPL. That was it correct, right? Okay, so the only thing on this uh, micro SD is that one IPL.doll, the two, two uh, megabyte file, and I am going to put it back into the SD card reader which is the SD to SP2 plugged into the bottom. And we're going to power it up again. Yeah, nothing. So I'm using one of these right angle ones. Um, maybe I could, maybe it's the SD to SP2. Oh wait, no, the power wire just came off. That's very funny. Let me solder that back on. When I flipped it around, I checked all connections last time, by the way, but when I flipped it around this time, I just realized that the power wire had come off. So let us put this over here. That's good to know. Looks like Extrems is in the uh, chat now, too. Hey, what's up, Extrems? Good to see you, man. I still uh, I still would really love to do one of these live streams with you where we play GameCube, Wii, and Wii U and, and show people the differences between them and, and the output quality and stuff like that. I think people would really dig that. Uh, he was just saying that it... Uh supports XFAT and GPT partitions as well. So Oh, cool. Yeah, let me touch that. Let me touch the ground up too. I don't know. Something must have gotten weird. Flexing it back and forth or something must have been. All right. Hmm. It's rock solid. It's not the prettiest, but it is rock solid. So, let me slide this back in and give it one more try. Okay. Power. Oh, hey, look at that. Jumped right in. Nice. Okay, well, so I think we're safe to put this, uh, put, start putting it back together then, right? Uh, yeah, you can get the uh, heat sink screwed down uh, and then probably put your disk drive back on because you're at 
pretty much that point, and then we can get the blue retro board installed. Sweet. All right. <laughs> oh, let me grab my screwdriver. Yeah, I, uh, I'm wanting to do a uh, power delivery GameCube power supply um, for USB-C. That'll uh, just plug directly into the external port so you don't have to do any internal changes to anything. Yeah, I already modeled up a connector for the GameCube power port since there doesn't seem to be any like third party ones out there that you can buy. A power over Ethernet version? Huh. That'd be fun. Two more screws. Where are those at? Good. We got to get the, uh, extra RAM that uh, Extremes was talking about on uh, Twitter the other day, too. Uh, what are the advantages of that? I would homebrew, assume I'm that assuming. Homebrew would be able to use it, but none of the real games would ever be able to do it. But he was saying that uh, the Game Boy Player port was supposed to be for extra RAM. Oh, huh. that's pretty awesome. So the GameCube Player port is extra RAM that doesn't work right. We just right. need a broadband adapter that connects over Wi-Fi. Yeah, uh, um, retro NAS adapter. One of these screws is being weird. Um, all right, that seems to be a decent enough fit. Let me try it very carefully with this. There we go. Power. Okay, I just needed to be uh, finagled a little bit. Cool. All right, I think we're I think we're good for there. And now uh, it's been a while since I've taken apart a full GameCube. I got to put the three screws underneath the fan, or no? Uh, yeah, there's three screws. So you have to put the uh, the disc drive on first uh, because the fan goes on after the disc drive. Uh, that's right. Okay. And how do you have the wires run for the Pico boot? Do you have to cut a piece of the metal shell? Uh, either cut it or bend it up if you're coming out the side like that. Or uh, you might be able to fit them out next to the uh, memory card slot. Might even just cut a little bit of the metal around the, uh, the side of the memory, or memory card slot and have it come out that way and around. Yeah, let me try. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do here. Let me grab this. Uh, 
Alright. Um, using a save game exploit is going to take longer to boot. Uh, the GC loader or the Pico boot are both valid options of getting it to boot directly into Swiss and then loading your games. Um, I think most of the uh, compatibility issues have been taken care of in Swiss, but uh, audio streaming and whatnot works directly from the SD card slots. Um, and whatnot, so. Uh, 26 gauge, and then, um, silicone stranded, or silicone jacketed wire. If you go to the, uh, install page he has it documented out so with uh now that i have the everything kind of solid and in place i want to power it on one more time just to double check so let me just get this down and this is probably a good idea for anybody else doing this as well because you don't want to put in the 900 other screws <laughs> that the GameCube has just to find out that there was one other thing missing. Or, or, or you're like me and maybe you bumped a wire off again or something. So let me... So here... I do love the uh, NES RGB mod for the, the NES consoles from uh, Tim. Just such a great mod. Agreed. Such amazing video quality out of it. over this view beautiful so it's obviously still working otherwise it wouldn't go into swiss so yeah. perfect so now i'm just going to put the rest of the screws on and uh I'll, I'll put the dvd screws on and then before i put anything else on we uh, i'll grab the blue retro board as well Yeah, you do the three underneath the fan and then leave the two that the fan screws in with out and put those in after. I I put those in now just to hold it all into place, but I could always just pop those two out. The most important thing is that I remembered the three underneath. <laughs> yep. Magnetic screw holder is great, but sometimes it's hard to get the freaking screws out. Oh, you're right. I had to, uh, that, the fan assembly piece blocks that final screw on the DVD assembly. Does it also need to be off in order to install Blue Retro? No, you can leave the fan mount in place. So I'll put, I'll just take it off just to put that one screw back in. Okay. 
So, I mean, I, I realize that we're, you know, almost two hours into this, and I do appreciate everybody's patience, but I think hopefully everybody understood that I'm taking my time both to discuss what's going on and to be super careful that I don't ruin something on a live stream. <laughs> but this is actually a fairly easy installation, all things considered. It just requires some patience, and maybe the spot by the chips was a little hard to solder to, but, you know, as you can see, I just took my time. I saw one wasn't perfect, so I went back and added some flux, and it really is something that I think, if you've, if you've worked on projects before, you could do. If this is your first project, respectfully, probably do something else first, but this is definitely not too hard. Yeah, there have been quite a few cubes killed with um, doing the Pico mods, or the Pico boot mod, just because it's pretty precise soldering you've got to do. Yeah. All right, so we're this. Here we go. So you can pull everything out of your bag. Well packed, Greg. Thank you. <laughs> no sarcasm, serious. Everything's nice and snug. Okay. Yeah, he's using the uh, Carby for HDMI output on his cube right now. So you're going to want to take the two screws out of the old front board on their front. These? Um, yep. So there's two screws. Just pull them both out. Um, I'm not sure that they're dead, dead, but I I've seen in like the reddits and whatnot that people have messed their cubes up doing it. Um, I just don't know how to clear off the solder globs or stuff. It was causing the uh, IPL to not boot. But, uh, some people have also broken components off the board, just taking the heat sinks off. Like, there's a, there's some risk involved with doing that mod for sure. Uh, before you screw that down. Yeah. You want to put your antenna on. Oh, okay. So um, the antenna is a double stick antenna, and it's just like a little flexible um, PCB. And the antenna goes between ports two and three. And the antenna wire should go out the top, or what would be the top of the console. So like this. Just like that. This is a very cool design. Have you updated your Swiss uh, Linux systems? Me? Uh, uh, there was a chat about uh, how oh. many bugs in uh, the SD2, SP2. All right, like that, correct? Just like that. Am I holding this in camera right? Yeah, sorry, it's a little... Okay, so then I... Uh... And you can put your new blue retro board in place. And then put your two screws back in. Uh, you have it upside down. There you go. Now I can put the screws in and then connect all that up. Why do you have the fan plugging into the blue retro board? The blue retro board has the ability to turn the GameCube off. If you had the fan plugged into the normal uh, power header, because you leave the power switch on when you use the blue retro to turn the console off. So the fan, the fan would never would stop stay spinning. On at all times. Yeah. Um, for, the, for the antenna, do I just kind of like wrap it around and put it back up? What I usually do is I will feed it underneath some of the uh, posts that are at the top and wrap it the uh, other direction, not the side with the reset lever, but the side with the, uh, no, sorry, yeah, the side with the reset lever. And then come around the board. Uh, let me see. 
So I would take it around this way and over to plug into the um, header on that. Yeah, we, we ran into that issue with the battery clips. Um, the one that I had specified for the um, production run was not in stock in China, so I had to go to a different one. And some of them came with the uh, battery terminal flat for the positive side. So when you put the battery in, you didn't actually notice that it wasn't connected. Oh, and I could put the um, the small little brackets back on now, right? Um, small brackets. Yeah, uh, the front brackets. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's four screws or those. Yeah, let me take just a quick moment to clean some of this stuff up because it's starting to I'm starting to get I'm starting to run into stuff that I don't need anymore. So let me just take a very quick moment because I'm grabbing at stuff and I'm knocking over things that I haven't needed in 10 minutes. So uh, sorry for the OCD cleanup session, everybody. It, it happens. Yeah, the GBS is a, a pretty good setup when you've got um, that custom firmware on it. I haven't actually, I need to build one and test it with my monitor, but you're saying it works good there, Nick? Yeah, um, that, that is an awesome one. And it's especially good if you, uh, if you have something like, um, like a, a VGA monitor that you want to play retro stuff on. I always mm -hmm. thought that was one of the best uses because analog in, analog out, but that's exactly what you're doing on those monitors. So it's perfect. Nice. I've done a couple streams on that too, on what it looks like to to run RGB through a scaler into that, and holy crap, it's awesome. Very cool. Yeah, I've got to uh, send a Carby to the guys that do the firmware for my monitor to get GameCube. Uh, PC video to work on it. Yeah, Matt should be able to do that. No problem for you. I've got a uh, Carby. I just need to send it to to the uh, guys that write the firmware for our uh, for our monitors. I got to do another order for boards here soon, and every time I do it, I um, end up paying a little bit more to have them work on the firmware for me. So, does it matter what order this goes in on? Um, those screw-in things, the uh, the spring should face out. Yeah, but I could I put those in now. I don't have to put anything on before that, right? I don't know why I'm drawing oh. a blank, but okay. Oh, those those can go in right now. Have they officially announced that? I know Puzzle uh, was working on something with GameCube a while back, but I don't know that they were doing that with Puzzle FX yet. Yeah, Woozle has a... I like him, but he has a reputation of talking about stuff that's 
quote unquote almost done, and then six years later, it's in the same exact spot that it was six years ago. Yeah. I tried well, to tell I him to do more was... harm than good with that, but I don't think you yeah. believe me. Uh, we've installed a Pico, um, a Pico boot on chip, and we're doing the uh, Blue Retro internal receiver from Laser Bear Industries. Okay, so I got these in. So now I just plug in the ribbon cable, right? Okay, kind of finagle that in. Uh, before you snap it in place, you've got your two uh, cables that you need to plug into your board. Okay. So you've got those two cables sitting in front of you? Yes. Um, so the one that is the same on both ends, it goes next to the relay that's got the little red dot on it. Okay. So there's the one, a little, that, the one that's uh, the same on both ends, you said? Okay. And connector on both ends. Doesn't matter which side goes in, just plug that into that header next to the relay. Upside down. Okay. Like that. Yeah. And then, then this... uh, your other cable goes into fan cable goes into the smaller of those two ports. Your bigger port of those two is that second cable there. Get in there. And now you can plug your ribbon in and um, set your board in place. Okay. And then we still have these two cables hanging that we got to plug in. We'll get those plugged in once you've got your blue retro board in place and Okay. Then now you can set it in, tilt it back, kind of move your cables out of the way where needed. Okay. Now both of those cables that you plugged in, take them on the back side of the fan mount next to the disk drive. Okay. Might be a lot of wires to kind of get around, but yeah, I have to reroute these real quick. So the one with the uh, male end to it, see it there. So, yep, that I'm goes. Close. Does that go into um, the fan slot on the board? It goes into the um, bigger of the two the slots power on slot. the power board. Yeah. It can only go in one way, but it is not the same connector, so it does require a little bit more force. Got it. All right. And the one with the female connector, you take the power cable from the cube and plug it into that. So tuck it back like that. All and then set. I just shove it back behind the disk drive out of the way, and you're good to go. Now, if you plug it in, uh, the GC loader is a plug and play device. So, if you're not comfortable with soldering, I would say wait for the GC loader to come back. They're doing a, a smaller run that's kind of like a soak test of the new hardware for the GC loader. Um, there have been some bricks from the going from the 2.0 beta to the 2.0 official release. If you have an issue, they do um, you contact them and figure out how to fix it. I'm not 100% sure what happens there. I'm like mine didn't brick when I updated.
Okay, flipping this over. Um, I have my Game Boy Player here, but I just wanted to assemble the bottom just to feel complete. I'm gonna have that brace that Todd designed up here. Prop the carby up. Uh, the Game Boy Player would require an EverDrive if you wanna play games that you don't have physical copies of. Yeah. Wait, let me uh, see if this powers on. And uh, 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 it took me a minute. I'm not saying this because Greg's on the call. I'm 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 being literal. It took me a second to to realize that the GameCube was on because the fan is that quiet. No bullshit. So obviously Swiss is there. So um, let me throw a couple of games on this micro SD just so we can see, uh, just so we can see what's on it, uh, or just see it in action. I guess is the better way. Um, I don't know if you could see this here, but this side uh, side loading micro SD card, great invention. Whoever came up with that, well done. Great work. So much easier. Let me message Thanos too and see. Uh, I think there's a, an I and I setting you can change so that your beta GC loader doesn't uh, trigger the uh, update warning in um, Swiss. Isn't that right, Extremes? copy i'm also going to wash the uh grease off my hands just to say it out loud again i'm not peeing on stream i'm just washing my hands <laughs> and i guess while we're uh while we're waiting for this maybe i could try updating the firmware on that playstation 5 controller uh so we could make sure that that all works so let me grab that even without the update, it will work, but um, what won't work is Retro can't set the col uh, color of the LED to show to tell you which player it's in. Well, this says three minutes left to do this, so uh, we get three minutes. <laughs> is there uh, is there just software to Google, like... Um, yeah. Update? Okay, download the firmware updater from DualSense. That's super easy. I'll drop that in the chat as well for uh, anybody curious. Ah, I think Greg just beat me to it. Perfect. Yes. Also gonna grab the latest Game Boy Player files. Just for the hell of it. Game Boy interface. Or Game Boy interface. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, Extremes. <laughs> Hopefully, you all know what I meant.
There's a support that Retro Frog made to uh, have the carby not um, have like bend force down with your cables and whatnot. Um, I think they're sold at Stone Age Gamer at the moment. Stone Age Gamers. Yeah, I'll drop a link to that as well. Let me uh, let me see. I grabbed the link, I'll post it real quick. It uh, just snaps into the little brackets, or um, vent slots in the back of the uh, GameCube. It says the wireless firmware up uh, controller update is complete, that's awesome. Uh, it also shows a charging indicator, so that's pretty cool, the firmware updater is something that you should probably have if you have a dual sense controller just for the hell of it. Um, yeah. It says one minute and 15 seconds left. And, uh, let's see, still nothing from Thanos. What? Uh, still nothing from Thanos about the memory card, um, about this. Do you have the oh, latest yeah. firmware files or anything? Um, uh, I don't, because I don't actually have a working unit. Um, let me pop into his Discord and see if I can grab it, though. Yeah. You might have it posted in their Discord. Thanks everybody for your patience, but I think we're pretty much pretty much ready to demo this thing, so Card Pro GC. Let's see here. Check that card. Uh, I have okay. another 32 gig. The original card that I used, I'm going to reformat that one. Um, and I'll, I could use that for the Mem Card Pro. I just... Uh... All right. I downloaded the firmware. Um, I will throw that into our Discord chat. Appreciate it. All right. So just once again, formatted that uh, with GUI format 32. Okay, and then let me grab those files. And I just dropped that onto the root of the card, right? I believe so, yeah. I will do that second. We'll launch the. Uh, we'll launch this first. We'll connect the controller, and then we'll do that uh, last. I guessed. I guessed. Jeez, Good job talking today, Bob. I'm not even drinking beer yet. All right. Um, so, just putting this right in the side. How awesome is that? That is such a cool invention. Uh, and I'm assuming. Do I need the original GameCube controller just to get paired? Nope. Oh, all right. Well, it's in the pairing mode. We are going to leave that unplugged. All right. So let me power this on. So a uh, dual sense controller for pairing. Yes. You hold the, uh, you hold the 
PlayStation button and the um, little button on the top left. Okay. Until it starts flashing. It is flashing. And then let go of your buttons, and the blue retro should grab it. That's that's it. Holy shit! That's literally that's all I did. I wish I left it on camera for that. Well, let me let me just let me just show. I, I legitimately just powered on the GameCube, and then held the PlayStation button in this one, and it all just paired. So if I had multiple yep. controllers, I could pair multiple to the GameCube. Yep. So to uh, get it back into pairing mode, you hold the reset button on the GameCube um, until the uh, LEDs will start flashing, and then they speed up a little bit. Wait until it speeds up. Uh, first one disconnects all the controllers. So the first time it starts flashing, it disconnects controllers. But if you hold it till it starts flashing faster, which is about six seconds or so, it will um, let you pair more controllers. Okay, so all I'm doing now... Once it's paired, the controller is paired. You can just oh. hit, turn it on with the uh, PlayStation button. Hey, Extremes, um, am I not allowed to have it in a subfolder? I have to leave it on the root, even with the latest version of Swiss and everything? So let me just power it off, power it back on. Well, that worked. The pairing process worked. Then uh, you can shut your console off by holding um, L2, R2 all the way down, X, and the little button on the right side of the controller at the same time, and it will turn off the console. Let go. Oh! Well, hey, how about that? And then to turn the console back on, all you have to do is hit the PlayStation button on your PS5 controller. Well, let me just fix this so Extremes can stop publicly shaming me for being stupid. And here we go. And how did you suggest powering it back on? Hit the PlayStation button on your DualSense. <laughs> I like it. I really like it. That's cool as hell. Okay. So, uh... Uh, the Nintendo Switch controller, the... I had a Switch controller somewhere. It's uh, along the same lines, but it's, uh, I think, plus. Uh, I don't know where my Switch controller got lost. Um, but it's along the same lines. It's the plus button, the two triggers, um, and then whatever the button in this position is. The bottom of the uh, base buttons. Extremes, you can at least understand why I wouldn't want every time I boot into Swiss, I see all of this, right? Like, I'll, I'm not being a dick, like, all kidding aside, like, you could understand why you might, especially somebody like me with a mild case of OCD, would want things like games and, you know, homebrew, whatever else. Let's do, uh,. Do some I do though. eventually want to do a PlayStation 1 and 2 version of it. It's going to require uh, custom controller ports to do the same style thing that I've been doing.
Well, Ash, you missed the whole, uh, you missed the whole explanation. I was feeling, uh, b uh, very on point today. So I got the bear pajamas, bear socks, and I got laser bear hoodie and a laser bear t-shirt on. Would you like to display in progressive mode? Hell yes, we would. All right. I'm also going to try to do this with uh, the sound sort of coming through my speakers, so please let me know if this is balanced good enough. This is my first time playing GameCube with anything other than either a GameCube or Wii controller. <laughs> It'll be right back, Bob. Yeah, do your thing. I just want to play one quick round and test out how it feels with the PlayStation controller. This is very comfy. Oh, I'm liking this. That preserver too much power for YouTube. Did it freeze the stream or something? No, it seems okay. I mean, I just paused it. <laughs> but... This is some cool shit. And right now, I'm oh, six feet away from my uh, from the GameCube itself. F-Zero's F terrible graphics. It's not that it's terrible, it's just that they are kind of... Um, I guess the road might cause some interference with YouTube. Alright, so let me... Uh, uh, is there an in-game reset to go back to the Swiss menu with this? Um, you can do the power off and on again. Uh, if you have Swiss loaded, you can do Swiss as IGR, but you have to install another copy of Swiss on your console for that. Okay. Um, or well, on we, your SD card. We're try inserting the mem card, and then I'll put, uh, drop this down. All right. Card Pro GC. It says updating firmware, beautiful. Oh, you don't have to have it um, set up that way. Do you have to enable it in Swiss first, though? Extrems? And, uh, while I'm waiting for that to update, I'm gonna, which is going fairly quickly, I'm gonna be packing this stuff up to make sure I give it to Brooklyn Video Games. So, I got the original GameCube front. Probably could have used a slightly better one. And then I have extra plastic pieces. So this one would be. This I have a couple of extra pieces here. Thanks for uh, watching, Frank. Have a good day. Oh, and I also have that's right, the original fan shell. at 75% so <laughs> Ash it's the same when you just work every day you just lose all track of what day it is the only time I ever really know what day it is is in the winter for football season and that's it
Uh, other than that, I just totally lose track. Uh, I have my old SD to SP2 that kind of wore out and fell apart. Let me toss that. Uh, no need to keep the fan screws, right? Keep those in my screw pile. ABO hiccups. Um, the retro.io stuff is all handled by um, Dark or Darth Cloud, and don't really have any control over how he has that set up. A lot of browsers don't have the ability to directly interact with Bluetooth devices. Um, that's just something that Chrome and Edge are able to do. And I know you had mentioned before about Brave and uh, a few other browsers, Firefox. They don't allow you to directly interact with Bluetooth devices that are physically attached to a computer. Um, and Anybody eventually know? maybe there'll be like a, a direct app made for it, for iOS and um, all those different things, but at the moment, it's just Chrome that's able to do it. This is a, is this a karaoke thing or something? I think I bought um, that at a video game store years ago because I saw it and I thought it was funny, and that was basically it. I think it's for Luigi's Mansion, maybe? Mario Party. Mario yeah. Party. Ah, thank you very much. Much appreciated. All right, let me... So... And Odama? Played that. So out of curiosity, um, and I'll let me I'll boot this back up in a second. I just the mem card pro, I wanted to make sure that loaded all the way. So what would something like this go for? So we have Game Boy uh, player adapter into a GameCube with the SD to SP2 side adapter. We got the Pico Boot. We got the Blue Retro in the front. Um, the Mem Card Pro. Let's not count that in. Just um, controller, Game Boy Advance adapter, Carby. Not the not the uh, Bluetooth controller. I'm just kind of curious because. I haven't really uh, kept I, up on that kind of stuff, but I mean, you've got you know around what eighty dollars for the Carby, a hundred for my board, a twenty dollars. For the Pico boot, I don't know what the consoles go for these days, but you probably have upwards of three hundred, four hundred dollars of value. Yeah, that's what I, I would guess. Closer to five, even. I would actually think it's about five hundred bucks for all that. I found a. Someone suggested seven hundred and fifty. So it also depends on who's selling it, right? Because I have friends that are pro modders that their work is solid. It's sometimes better than factory work. So you have somebody yeah. like that selling something like this. Whereas, you know, the work that I just did, you saw I took my time. There's no cold solder joints. Everything worked fine. But, like, I'm still never going to be cruise. It's just it's not going to happen. So yeah. you have somebody like that selling something. It is a little bit different. Um, but, so, yeah, I don't know. I, I would think that a pro modder that does this, that has a reputation for doing this, would probably get 750 Whereas... You know, if it were me selling or a stranger on eBay, I think 500 would probably be safer because you should always expect problems with stuff like that. So, yeah. All right, let me get this together. I'm also going to grab a Game Boy cartridge just to show that. And I don't, let's I don't... see if the DVD is working. The, um, I don't think the GameCube has enough memory to even load Steam on Linux.
so your uh, video is flipping out, Craig. Yeah, it's been doing it the whole time. I'm not entirely certain why. It must be a Discord thing. Yeah. All right, so if I hit. Because I've got, like, uh, the even the Discord video stream drops out for me. I've been watching this on the YouTube video stream for the most part. Interesting. Okay. So, uh, this is a, a DVD-R, but this is the original Game Boy Player startup disc, a copy of it. That's nice. pretty interesting. Huh. So, I guess the biggest advantage to using some, a setup like this would be that you also get to use your original games. Yeah. All right. And that's so, the biggest part of Bike Boot. And you always just hit the PlayStation button to reconnect, right? Yeah. And once it's um, paired to the console, it you just use or turn the con or controller back on with the PlayStation button. ABO hiccups think Skype video chats better than Discord. I agree, but I was having some technical difficulties before this stream, and uh, I actually was uh, not able to get NDI running. Otherwise, I would have had Greg connect that way. Yeah, that's how we normally do it was with Skype, so I was a little surprised when I got the Discord one. So this blocks of free space, this is uh, the Memcard Pro. Yeah. Is the, is the Memcard Pro showing you the game label on it? I'm not sure if that made it into uh, let me, um, uh, let me check the current out. release. The little OLED... I'm not... I can't remember how... Or if that was part of uh, the I just pressed the button on the left. That's what happened. <laughs> Shit. Damn it. I shouldn't have hit that. This is database uh, error. But I think I have to connect it to Wi Fi right. for that. Or so. DVD drive. Do I have to press the PlayStation button to reconnect after every reboot? Um, you might have to hold or turn your controller off and back on by holding um, the PlayStation button. Blue Nux, my main CRT of choice is a low TVL PVM. I know that's going to sound weird and counterproductive, but like a Sony PVM 20M2U is still a higher line count than pretty much any consumer grade TV ever, but it's not as high as some of the others. So you get to enjoy all of the weirdness of the of CRTs without, um, you know, without going too far. But I do. That said, you know, I, I absolutely love all of the other crazy CRTs I have. My D32 is the best I've ever owned. Um, that might have to go soon, unfortunately. And there's a bunch of other really cool things on there. So, all right, I'm gonna force 480p. Isn't there a uh, force widescreen? Yes. Let's see what happens here. I'm standing over by the GameCube to see if the Memcard Pro does anything, but I think it would have to be connected to Wi-Fi for that, I think, to update the firmware and do something else. So, no, it didn't It didn't say the game name, but this is still just a, a beta, so... I, I think... Um, I think he's running a custom version of Swiss right now in the testing base. Um, let me... Double check because I just talked with 
them about it. Blue Ducks, that's a, a Memorex 20 inch with S video. Sounds awesome. Honestly, that's probably an amazing setup. Definitely take the time to get S video cables for all the consoles that support it. I think it's totally worth it. What's going on, Shank? Oh, a JVC 20 inch PVM is pretty awesome as well. I'll check, um, I'll check my router to see, uh, can I connect? I forgot how to connect to the Memcard Pro's Wi-Fi. Oh. Um, with the Pika boot, it um, Swiss boots too fast, and so if you load into Swiss, just reload the Swiss dull, and uh, the mem card will show up. It's a uh, something that they're still working on. Hey, interestingly, uh, yeah, interestingly enough, Greg, I think this controller disconnected. Did it? Yeah. Did, did it die? It could have. I don't think so. The blue light's still on. On the uh, controller? Yeah. Thanks, Shank. I, uh, I lowered the volume down. Um, it's weird. I'm not sure why your controller would have disconnected like that. Weird. If I just plug in a uh, the wired controller, that should take over for it, right? Yes. All right, to get your uh, Mem Card Pro to show the correct, uh, or to that show the per the, game. That shut off the GameCube. Plugging it in did? Yeah, plugging in the original controller. Let me let me power cycle everything, and I'll take out the M Card Mem Card Pro too. Full power cycle. Oh, F Zero GX is widescreen mode and options. I totally forgot. It's been it's been it's been such a long time since I've actually played a game rather than just test it on stream. All right, full power on. Not the GameCube controller is not plugged in. Kyle said that happens sometimes with the PS Five controller, both on Blue Retro and the Mister. Interesting. So I'm plugging in the GameCube controller now, and that works. Okay. Um, so reload the Swiss Dull. Me? You go back the IPL dot Dull. Reload that. Uh, like by power cycling? No, no. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> in Swiss, reload it because uh, with the Pika boot, it's Swiss gets started before the mem card gets initialized. Uh, the power off button combo does not work on the stock game controller, but that's something that we, that Darth Cloud has talked about potentially adding in the future. All right now, when you start a game, the um, Mem Card Pro should show. Uh, uh, my the Mem game Card Pro wasn't plugged in, so let me. I it's plugged oh. in now. Now I just rebooted, and now it's showing. Yeah, let me um, let me load a different game and see what happens. So the this was something that we ran into when testing the Memcard Pro for uh, the video that Macho Nacho did. His Memcard Pro would wouldn't show the per game um, things without reloading Swiss or something along those lines. It automatically created uh, a new card when I loaded Crazy Taxi. Does it say on the uh, the, screen now? No, it says GC test. Oh. Maybe the firmware that I grabbed was an older one? I'm not sure. Extremes, can you elaborate? Um... The 
one I sent you was from last week, so it should be good. To be honest, I've only used um, I've only used my PS5 controller with my Mister a couple of times, and I didn't have the disconnect problem. Yeah, extremes. I just meant the last part, so I have no idea why you're doing this. I don't understand what you mean. I'm I'm just loading up some games just to see what happens. Um. All right, anything else to try with the Memcard Pro? I'm going to throw the... Um... Do you remember how to even connect to the Wi-Fi on it? I thought it had its own, like, its own Wi-Fi network that you connect to in order to set it, connect it to your network, you know? Yeah, you can. Uh, it should show up locally, I believe. Oh, 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 good point. All right, yeah, good point, Extrems. Um said reloading Swiss to make the game ID work. If Extremes couldn't do it, we're not going to do it, which is, I mean, that's fair. <laughs> it's just, it's well, he's so saying cool. that it just worked outright for him. Oh. I'm just going to delete the memory cards folder because that's all testing anyway. And was there something, um, was there like a button combo that I had to hit or something to see that wireless network on here? Um, I'm looking through the Discord chat on the Memcard Pro. I haven't had a, a working one since they started the betas on this. Because I could... I'm doing this by memory, and it's been over a year, but I could swear if I just opened up my phone and had showed the Wi-Fi on here, it would it would show up as an there, option. There should be a Wi-Fi logo that pops up on the screen. That says X. It's X'd out. So. Okay. Is it a file that I'm supposed to drop on? I <laughs> I did the damn video on it. Oh, Wi-Fi setup. Okay, perfect. I held both buttons down, and it says Wi-Fi setup. Yeah, all right. There you go. Uh oh, what's the password? Damn it. Card Pro Wi Fi password. CP admin, okay. No, is it different for this one? Might be for the beta. This is my fault, everybody. Thanos told me, give him a heads up for, uh, before I did this, and I was like, yeah, yeah, sure, and I totally forgot. Let me just power cycle and try one more time.
that was it. Um, I just I let it time out. Oh. Yep. Just found it on his thing too. So. Sure, you have a valid OS folder on the root of your SD card. Uh oh, what did I screw can you up? Put the, can you put the firmware in? I think yeah, there but was I think a... I may have just cleared all that out. Uh oh, oh. You have to put your uh, OS uh, folder back on. There wasn't an OS in that file, though. It was just uh, it was a single. F oh, there. What? Never mind. I see it now. I'm an idiot. That's right. It's right there right there and that could have been why we didn't get any of the databases in there yep okay it's all making sense now I saw the other day on hackaday that somebody made a new uh neck board and uh, flyback for the uh, Apple um, the the old all-in-one apples with the black and white screens. Oh, yeah? Didn't look too deep into it, but it's pretty crazy. Start this again. Beautiful. It's all working fine now. Nice. Wi-Fi connected. Beautiful. I'm in. Wi-Fi, FTP server, load last card with memory card boots. Beautiful. Yeah. So let me... Um, Grab the PlayStation controller uh, and then load up a game or two and see what happens now. I bet you it's just going to work. Wait, all of that patching that you see on screen, that's the hard work of people who work on Swiss. That's at Scrams and Emu Kitted and anybody else who's donated to the community. The reason we could just press a button and load these things is because of that. So just always a shout out to any of the teams who do stuff like that. So there's nothing on the Memcard Pro screen at the moment. I guess let me try another regular game. Uh, reset.
can also try what um, Nacho Nacho had to do, which was reload the Swiss after you turn it on. Yeah, I'm going to try that because it, it shows on the Mem Card Pro the last uh, memory card that was loaded, but as soon as I load a game, it goes off. So right now, like it says Crazy Taxi, it says Wi Fi connected. Oh, now I got to power cycle the PlayStation controller as well. But that's less of an issue because unless you're constantly resetting like I am, it's never going to be a problem with you. Oh, wait, yeah, so let's go back and reload that. Games, and let's do F0. Now it says creating card. And now it says F F0 GX. So yeah, you might you might be right. It might have to reload it like that. Um. But like, if you have a GC loader, that problem doesn't come up at all. Yeah, and now in the um, in the web browser of the MemCard Pro GC, I just refreshed and it shows Crazy Taxi and F-Zero GX. That is pretty cool. <laughs> Good luck, Ash. <laughs> um, all right, well, is there anything anybody wants to see before we head out? Because this was really mostly just, uh, you know, installing this thing, making sure it works, showing off my bear pajamas, but... Uh, you know, we've accomplished all of that. I'm just kind of wondering what else we got. Oh, that's right. I just found the other laser bear fan mount here. Um, I love the uh, SD to SP2 side installation. I think that is very cool. Memcard Pro is awesome. I never, never doubted that, though. It always is. Uh, Check the chat to see if there's anything else anybody wants. I think we might call it after this. Thanks to everybody for the super chat. <laughs> Thanks, Greg, for doing this with me. Yeah, well, definitely. Yeah, I guess that's basically everything then. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Greg. I'll um, I'll have like a little bit of a write up on this just to um, you know to at some point just to kind of show all this stuff off. And soon, uh, at the very latest tomorrow, but probably before the end of the night, I will have all of the links updated in this live stream to all of the cool stuff that I got for it. So that way, if uh, if you sat through all of this and you want the same things, I could link to it. But basically, just go to. No, I'll just have all. I'll have all the links. Make it easier. So thank you all. And uh, I will see you all soon. Everybody have a great day.